Hey, it's Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy, and this week's Chalk Talk is a rhythm strip with a rhythm problem. So let's take a look. These two strips came from the same ECG, and as you look at this rhythm strip, you can see that there's a collection of pretty normal looking beats, but then there's this FLB. We know what an FLB is. It's a funny looking beat, but it clearly comes early, and then it's followed by a couple of other normal looking beats, and down here, it's the same thing. You have this premature beat. Let's take a look at the normal beats first and measure some intervals and do some basic stuff here. You might want to use calipers, but first try to train your eyes to just look at little boxes. Rely a little less heavily on calipers. So for example, let's just start with this beat right here. Since this QRS lands on a heavy line, it's easy to count off the rate. 300, 150, this would be 100. So it's a little bit less than that. It's somewhere in the high 90s. If you wanna be exact, you can look at the interval. This would be 600 milliseconds. So we're talking maybe about 620. We can use our calculator divide 620 into 60,000, or we can just take the number six divided by 620 and get a rate of 96 beats per minute, just ignoring the decimal point. Now, what about the PR interval? Look at this beat. Notice that the QRS complex starts on this line right here. We can see the P wave starts around this line right here, four little boxes. So that's 160 milliseconds. Now what about the QRS complex? How long does that last? Again, if we look at little boxes, we have one and then two, and then maybe it's a little bit more than two small boxes. So I would probably call the QRS complex 90 milliseconds. What about the QT interval? Sometimes it's easier to measure T waves with calipers just because it's a larger interval. So let's grab these calipers, bring it from the beginning of the QRS to the end of the T wave. And it's easy to just plant that onto a heavy line, 380 milliseconds. So if we say the QT interval is 380 milliseconds, then the QTC would be 380 divided by the square root of the R to R, which we already said was 620, so that's 0.62. Grab our calculator again, and we'll say 380 divided by the square root of 0.62, and that would give us 482. Now, 482 milliseconds is a little bit long. It actually does look a little bit long because the T wave should not really go past the midpoint between the two R to R intervals. So let's take these two. So it's a little bit more than three large boxes, isn't it? So if we measure off a little bit more than one and a half large boxes and extend that line down to here, you can see the T wave actually extends past that midpoint. So indeed it looks like QTC of 482 milliseconds appears to be accurate because the QT is a little bit long. All right, so let's turn our attention to this funny looking beat. The first thing you need to do is look to see if there's a P wave in front of it because this could be a PAC with aberrant conduction because it comes early. It lands on the conduction system at a point where part of the bundle branch block system is refractory, so it conducts a little bit more slowly. Well, to look for a P wave, you wanna examine the previous T wave and compare it with the T wave here and see if it looks different. See if there's a bump on it or a bite taken out of it or see if there's anything that would make you think there's a P wave there. Now there's a little bit of irregularity right in there, a little sort of like bumpy looking stuff. Might be something, but let's take a look at this one down here. If we look at this T wave and look at this T wave, they look about the same. I don't see that bumpy stuff here. I don't see anything that looks like a P wave. Keep in mind, these P waves are very tall. So I can't say that there is a P wave in front of this wide looking beat. And that kind of makes you think that this is a premature ventricular contraction. Well, one thing about PVCs is they're often associated with what's known as a fully compensatory pause. So we're talking about this pause right here. Now, I sometimes call it compensatory pause after any premature beat because it takes a while for the sinus P wave to kick in. Because keep in mind, the sinus node is up here in the high right atrium. And if you have a PVC that arises from the bottom chamber, it could take a long time for that signal to make its way up the AV node and back to the atria to affect the sinus node. And only about one third of patients have intact 
retrograde AV conduction. And so most of the time, the PVC will have no effect on the sinus node. The sinus node will just fire on time and the atria won't even know that that PVC occurred. And so what happens is the timing of the next P wave is unaffected. Now you can prove that by using your calipers and looking to see if the following sinus nodal impulse is on time by taking the P to P interval and mapping it out. Sometimes you can put a little mark over here where the pin lands and move the caliper over to see where it lands. And sure enough, this P wave comes precisely on time. The other way to prove that is to take the caliper and set them for two P waves. Those are like King Kong calipers, but you can see that I have one pin on this P wave and one pin on this P wave. And if I move this over to the P wave before the PVC right there, then you can see that this P wave occurs where you expect it to. And so when the next P wave occurs on time, we refer to it as a fully compensatory pause, meaning that the sinus node was unaffected by the premature beat. And that is supportive of this being a PVC and not a PAC, because usually Actually, if a PAC occurs, that PAC is so close to the sinus node that it will often reset the sinus node and throw off the rhythm. So the next P wave will either occur a little early or a little late, but more often it will not occur on time. So this isn't 100% accurate or predictive of a PVC, but it certainly supports this being a ventricular premature beat and not an atrial. Okay, so I think what we have is just simply a normal sinus rhythm with a prolonged QT interval and then frequent PVCs with fully compensatory pauses. Okay, so I hope that gives you a little bit more insight into how to look at these tiny details when you're making measurements on a rhythm strip. And until next time, this is Dr. Nick with the ECG Academy. Thanks for watching.